Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Bella Grace podcast. Whether you are struggling to find balance, using unhealthy behaviors or substances to cope, or you just want to unlock the root cause of what's holding you back from living your best life, Bella Grace Coaching can help you transform your life, mind, body, and soul. And this week, we are doing that by talking about... Rosie? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot our <laughs> pathways to <laughs> spiritual growth. <laughs> there you go. And we're Path- recording separately this week because my daughter is sick. Rosie and I have crazy life stuff going on, and it's we summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. We are going to be talking about different spiritual paths, right? Yeah. So we actually recorded this podcast episode, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yes, Um, we did. But my computer is on the fritz and it deleted our video. So here we are again. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Uh, The first time we recorded, y'all, it It was was so good. It was like, it was like scripted, okay? I know. And it, and now it's like we we have to you know when you create something so good the first time and then you realize that wait, what what am I trying to say here? <laughs> Let's just say that sometimes the first time you do try something, it comes out perfect. And then you try to do it again, and you are hoping it comes out just as good as the first try. And then it's like, you can only cross your fingers. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, pathways to spiritual growth. Uh, Rosie and I are both Christians. And so, for us, spiritual growth takes on several different possibilities like we we both have different ways that we grow Mm -hmm. spiritually and our goal with this episode is to share our pathways to spiritual growth with you um so that maybe you can use them yourself you can adapt them to your own needs your own walk and help yourself grow spiritually because part of transforming your life mind body and soul is taking care of your soul yeah and so and I don't know if you can hear my dog barking in the background hopefully not (laughs) she's outside (laughs) and there is no one to let her in at the moment so we're just gonna run with it (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh yeah so this is um what do I I I think I want to start off by saying that um, I had never watched this movie, but yesterday after church, um, because I like to come home after church, well, actually after church, I like to go eat and then come home and nap. I don't know if everybody does this, but I do this all the time and it's, it's amazing. If you haven't tried it, you should, but sometimes I like to just watch a movie while I'm trying to nap. But yesterday I was watching this movie and I was it was it's called um God is Dead. And it was so good. So it was about this professor who's atheist. He's a college professor, he's atheist, he does not believe in God. So he has all these philosophies and philosophers um you know saying that there's no existence of God and that, you know, basically there is no God. And there is a young guy in there who is Christian and he was like, okay, no, there is a God. Because the professor was trying to um, ha- give everyone an easy, uh, I guess, a credit for them writing God is dead. And he was like, he he just couldn't get himself to do it because, you know, he, that's not what he believes in. And although it was an easy, easy credit, like easy A, because anyone could do it. I mean, I could even do it and be like, eh, I mean, I know God's not dead, but if it gets me a good, uh, you know, 
a easy grade, then I'm going to go ahead and do it. But he did not do it. And I thought it was amazing because that was, he was the only one who refused to do that and to stand up to a professor. And that's, that's bravery. That's courage. So then I was just like, wow. So the whole movie is really good, but I probably napped here and there, <laughs> but I woke up towards the end. <laughs> but anyways, well, what I mean by that is what I'm trying to say is that we all have to believe in something. And like the God, the God, the gods, uh, I'm sorry, guys. The guy said, how can you hate something that doesn't exist? Because he didn't, he hated God because mm -hmm. when he was young as a 12 year old boy, his mother died of cancer and he was Christian. He was raised in the faith. But when that happened, he prayed his heart out that God would save her. She still died and he stopped believing. So he took it upon himself to hate God for the rest of his life and also um, educate people or if I should say convince people that there was no God all because of the hatred and anger and hurt he had inside of him. And so then anyways, long story short, the boy was like, well, how can you hate something that doesn't exist? That totally defeats the purpose, right? So anyways... With that said, I feel like we all have to believe in something. We all have to feed our soul because our soul lives inside of us and our body is just the temple of our soul. So what do you do when you have, uh, when you come uh, across a very hard season in your life, what do you do? Do you, do you just cry? Do you, uh, who, do you pray? What, what do you do? That's, I feel like that's something that we should all ask ourselves, like, what do you do? Or, or what, I don't know. Like, for me, I, I pray. Because there's nothing else that I know to do than to call on God when I have, when I'm, I'm going through a season, whether I'm feeling some kind of way and there's spiritual warfare going on. And for those people who aren't, aren't Christian, you probably will get confused about what spiritual warfare is. And basically in, in the physical world, it manifests as diseases. It manifests as a car accident, um, drama going on at work or anxiety, depression, obsessive thoughts, even addiction. In the spiritual world, the spiritual realm as, realm, as how us Christian call it, it is always a, a battle towards good and evil. And a lot of people don't know that. And that's why people are like, well, when I, I'm going through something, I just tell people, you know what, I'm not okay. Can you pray for me? Because I'm being attacked or this is how I feel. This is what's going on. Because there's always stuff that we, whether it's bad vibes, bad people we encounter throughout the day, bad, bad things happening to us, to, uh, uh, to us throughout the day, throughout the week. Those things are, are not just, I, I guess, if I should say they're not, mm, they're not just there. They're not just happening. Like this is a spiritual world we live in, whether we want to believe it or not. Yeah. There's always things happening behind the scenes yeah. is how mm -hmm. we believe it. There's good and evil. There's forces that we can't see that are working for and against us. Like mm -hmm. that's how we as Christians believe. Um, and you're right. Like it can manifest as like anxiety, depression, um, problems with a child when your child mm -hmm. is acting out it can be um marriage issues it can be all of these things and a lot of times like we call it being tested right we're going through a testing mm -hmm. season or yeah. we're going through a desert season um mm -hmm. and what rosie and i want to do with this episode is help you walk through those seasons yeah. And give you some tools to help you come out on the other side so that you don't end up jaded like the professor in that movie. And it, it's called God's Not Dead. Um, It is such a good movie, by it the is. way. I it love is. that. I one. was crying. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, wow. Amazing. But the problem is that he walked through a really hard season, right? Like he, yeah. he walked through the death of his mother, through his mom's mm-hmm. sickness, and then she yeah. died. And yeah. so many of us go through things like that, where we're praying for a loved one. We're hoping for someone's salvation. We're hoping for someone's healing. We're hoping that someone will come back to God. Um, and then sometimes it doesn't happen. Mm-mm. Our prayers aren't answered and you can, or maybe they're not answered the way we expect them to be answered. Yeah. Yeah. And you can come out of that season jaded and mm-hmm. hurt yeah. and angry, or yeah. you can come out of that season. What is it? You can walk through fire, but walk through hell and not smell like fire or smell like smoke. Um, and that is the goal is for because all of us are going to have seasons that aren't great we're all going to have storms we all have hardships um but coming out of those seasons refreshed renewed with new strength with new knowledge new wisdom and new faith is the goal like that is that is god's hope for us and so Mm -hmm. That is the purpose of this episode is to, we want to help you be able to navigate those hard seasons and not come out jaded, not come out hurt, not come out resentful, but instead come out more whole than you went into that season to begin with. Yeah, stronger and with the feeling refreshed with the purpose, <clears throat> not feeling um, weak or defeated or hopeless or broken yeah so and, what do you do Rosie when you're going through a hard season I know you already said prayer I do a lot of things when I'm going through a hard season I cry I, I cry a lot I cry a lot because I'm a crier um, but I think the number one thing that I do when I'm going through a season is pray pray and worship. And I pray so much. I pray on my way to work. I pray every time that I come across anything that does not make sense to me. If some, I just pray about everything. Uh, And I feel like it reminds me that I'm not alone and that I don't have to do this walk or walk this life alone. Like God always has my back, no matter what I'm facing, whether it's that difficult co-worker or it's that commute to work that stresses you out put some worship music on and you'll see that you're gonna be in your car like yeah like it's okay (laughs) I mean as long as I get there alive that's all that matters Mm -hmm. or I mean whatever it is it just helps um shift your perspective on whatever you're going through because you're not focused on the on those things that are, are there, you're focused on, on Jesus, on God. And, and you're like, okay, I have no control of what's going on, but you're still in control. God, like you're holding the wheel like that. Carrie, um, Carrie Underwood song, Jesus take the wheel. Yes. Because I mean, God, the only thing that isn't good, God is the only person, or should I say, being who's in control because we have no control of of anything so to know that I don't have to have everything under control and that I don't have to know what I'm doing or work anything out because God is working all things good for me gives me peace and it helps me throughout my day and that's just what I do that's what works for me what works for you Teresa yeah so okay um when we initially recorded this, it was before I was going to go on my anniversary trip. Remember mm-hmm. I was yeah. okay. So I'm going to we talk about snakes. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about snakes. Okay. So for anybody who doesn't know, I am deathly afraid of snakes, like horribly afraid of snakes. Like I can't even see them on the TV because it makes my stomach hurt and I'll scream and I'll cry. Um, mm. I'm terrified of snakes and we went to the hill country for our anniversary trip over the 4th of July week. 
Mm. And if you're from Texas, you know, we have snakes. Like that's just part of, yeah, you can't help it. It's just part of Texas. And I randomly came across a post that said something about water moccasins in the particular part of Texas that we were going to. And I freaked out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I almost canceled the whole trip because I was afraid that there were going to be snakes in the river where we were going. Like I was freaking mm-hmm. out and I like, I was terrified. Like I was, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think about anything else. Like it was that bad. And mm. I was sitting there and I told you this story when we recorded initially, but I was sitting there and I, all of a sudden it came to mind. Like, it was like, God was just whispering to me, like, can you trust me with this too? Because, oh, I, yeah. yeah, because I started thinking about the way that I was behaving and how yeah. I was spiraling. And I was just like, so stressed about the snakes that I was like, googling stuff and I was like googling the statistics of how many snake bites and I was doing all this stuff right and that is exactly what I do when I feel out of control about my finances about my daughter about my husband like about the future like and I have over the years learned how to trust God to be the dad to my daughter when she didn't have a dad to be the rock of my life. I've trusted Mm -hmm. him to be my provider. And it's been this long journey of me learning how to trust God with all of these different things. Right. And it's always been like this test where like God will keep putting me through the same situations or keep allowing those situations until I learn the lesson. Right. Like he'll test you until you pass the test. And so when he dropped that in my spirit of like, can you trust me with this too? I was like, oh my gosh. Like I never even thought about the fact that God wants me to trust him with my insane fear of snakes. And I was like, wow, mind blown. I'm like, okay, why did I not ever think about this before? Because my fear of snakes has controlled so much of my life. And I'm like, okay. So from that moment, like I was just praying like, God, I trust that we are safe. I trust that you are going to bless this trip. I trust that you're, even if one of us encounters a snake, like you're going to take care of us. You're going to give us the right information. You're going to give us the wisdom on how to handle it. Like you're going to protect us. And I changed the narrative about what I was telling myself about this trip and started just trusting God to take care of us on this trip. Yes. You were speaking (laughs) life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you have to do. And that's, that's what prayer is. Also, you're, you're speaking life into something that is dead or paralyzed or uncertain most of the time that's what you're doing and like I was telling you last time Teresa um there was this um thing I was listening to and and this this person was like well you know when you pray you're praying you're talking to God but meditation is God talking to you and I was like hmm let me think about that and I was like, well, I guess when you're praying, you're obviously you put your hands together, you bow your head down, or you can just close your eyes. You don't even have to do all that. You, you, you know, uh, if you're very traditional, then, okay, you get on your knees and you do everything. But sometimes you can't do that. You're like in other places, like, um, for example, uh, um, Daniel used to go out in the balcony every, for three times a day, morning um lunchtime and evening he would go over there in a balcony window and he would pray to god where people can see him so he wasn't pr- like on his knees he was standing which just you know you can see that you can pray to god anywhere in the restroom in the car wherever you are you can always call on to god 
And I was like, well, yeah, because you're, you're praying, you're talking to God. And then if you stay still and just listen, you'll hear God talking to you. Mm-hmm. You, you'll hear, you can tell the difference between the voices in your head. Yeah. You'll, you'll know, you, and- you'll be able to discern God's voice. Yeah. And the more you spend time meditating, the more familiar God's voice becomes to you. Yeah. So like I always um, compare it to like when you first make friends with someone, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and you see each other in public and they're like, Hey Rosie, Hey Rosie, you may not recognize their voice, right? Like you might turn around because you hear someone screaming Rosie, but it Mm -hmm. may not be because, Oh, that's so-and-so. Right. But like, We've been friends for a while. So if I were to scream, hey, Rosie, across the farmer's market, you'd turn around and know that it was me, right? You would you would yeah. recognize my voice. But because we spend time together, we have yep. a relationship. We talk. We You know, like if someone were to randomly pick up my phone and text you, you would know that it wasn't me just based on the way that I text you because you know how I text, you know, how I talk, you know, the words I use, you know, the words I don't use. And so it's the same thing with God. The more you spend time with him, the more familiar, familiar you are with him and the and way the that more, he speaks And the you. more your relationship grows with mm-hmm. him. Yeah. 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 It's so important to have a spiritual life because it feeds your soul. It feeds your if it just it it makes you see things from a spiritual perspective mm-hmm. you no longer take a lot of things um i guess you won't get offended easily or take a lot of things personal because you realize that everyone is fighting their own spiritual battle so sometimes it's not even towards you it's just someone is going through something else mm-hmm. and and um, once once you you have a relationship with God and you know more about God, you realize that it's 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 a spiritual world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No. So you said meditation is. Um... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> guys. This is real life. We're, we're we're both recording from home. <laughs> Normally it's just me and Rosie in my living room and she's got her kids, she's got her husband. <laughs> she's got life going on over there. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Please don't make a meme out of me. (laughs) No, no. But so like you were saying, Mm. prayer is you talking to God and meditation is God talking to you. And so I want to like break down what meditation is because a lot of people might think that it's like woo woo, you know, new age or like some other religion or something. And it's not like I... So when I was going through all of the stress and anxiety about the snakes on our trip, I started praying and meditating and I pulled out the dwell app and I love the dwell app. Um, Our friend Anna uses it, I think is what we were talking about. Um, But so I pulled up a meditation on dwell about trusting God. And so, um, I sat there and I would put it on at night and just let it play. And what it does is it, it reads scripture over you. And so it is like you are listening to God speak these things over your life. And this particular one was about trusting that God will take care of you, trusting that God will direct your steps. Um, trusting that he knows what you need. He knows what's going to happen and just learning to trust him. And so by the time it was time for me to go on my trip, like I was 
so much more relaxed. I was excited. The fear of the snakes was completely gone. Like I was ready to go and thank God we did not see a single snake. If my family did, they did not tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, look, mom, look over there. <laughs> yeah, no. And my daughter's friends, like they thought that I, they thought that it was just like a funny ha ha fear. Like and yeah, no. they were going to play a trick and like one of them was going to buy a, a fake snake and like leave it in my bed. And my daughter and my husband <laughs> were like, absolutely not. No. Like if you want my mom to hate you for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but I yeah. been like, yeah, your Teresa needs healing for the next couple of years. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I would have been in therapy. Yeah. For a while so, yeah. yeah but it's serious so it is yeah it's really bad but so yeah I prayer meditation um and for me my meditation time sometimes it's literally like putting on a guided meditation app and mm -hmm. listening to it and there's mm -hmm. like I said I used well um there's other if you just get on Spotify and search for like christian meditations um or like nighttime meditations whatever like you can put those on and it's like soothing music with just scripture being read over you or mm -hmm. sometimes meditation for me looks like turning on some worship music laying in the living room floor and mm -hmm. just being quiet mm -hmm. like relaxing my body completely and I'll do this exercise where I like tighten every I start at my toes and I tighten them and then I release them and then mm -hmm. I tighten my foot and I release it and then I tighten my legs and I release them and then I tighten my torso and I release it and then I go all the way up until I do my hands and my face so that my entire body is relaxed and then I just lay there wow. and just listen just to whatever God wants to like pour into you at that moment, like just laying there completely relaxed and just listen. Yeah, that's amazing. I love how you, you were praying and God just gave you that peace when you need it. And your whole trip was amazing and you didn't see any snakes and you prayed about it and God answer your prayer and there was no snakes i love that yeah i love that because it's just like you you knowing that god has your back and if there's a snake i'm sure that i mean god's gonna take care of it right yeah well something similar happened to us i we're not scared well i wouldn't say we are not but this is the situation that we we went through over the weekend we went camping last weekend and it's where we normally go camping and it's a cabin there are no beds so we take our inflatable mattresses and I we just love going camping we're outdoor people but so we were actually I took the bible with me because we have gotten into the habit of reading our bible as a bedtime story for the whole family so we're there and we had just finished the story of Joseph and who was, we're getting to Moses and, you know, well, anyways, my husband, we had the light on and my husband got up to turn off the light. And as he did, he looked down and there was a scorpion. <gasps> yeah, I know. It was not nice. It was in, oh. It, they're creepy yeah so it's like nude but it had like black and it was a huge scorpion like I think my husband stepped on it by accident when he got up and he looked down and it was sort of like dancing and so he just like went and killed it and I was like oh, my daughter was already asleep this was like 11 p.m at night and we were tired we had been swimming we had been um I was in, he, my husband went canoeing. I was in a kayak. We were doing a lot of 
physical stuff before, you know. So it was it was a lot of fun. But he was like, oh, my God, I can't turn off the light. And I'm like, why? He's like, because what if there's more scorpions? And I'm like, I'm honestly, I've, I'm, I have become very trusting of God that nothing really scares me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, man, am I just dumb or am I just like, I don't know. So I'm just laying there like this, like, like, okay. And he's like, I, I think I should uh, move stuff around and see if there's another one. And I'm like, um, uh, okay. And he starts shaking up things and sure, surely there was another scorpion there. And this one was smaller. And, and as soon as he like tried to get it, it ran away, but he, was able to kill it but they're really fast so yeah. anyways and i was just like oh my god like my husband was like i knew it something told me to get up and i was like okay like okay i'm over here thinking that was god telling him to get up <laughs> <laughs> from a spiritual you know perspective yeah. But I'm also he like here, like, no, I mean, even if something bites me, I'm okay. Like, I know God's got me. Like, I'm not scared of anything or anyone because I know that, like, you know, God's behind me. Actually, God's in front of me, beside me, and around me, and behind me. He's everywhere protecting yeah. me. We are covered by his precious blood, me and my children and our family. I always pray that, and I just feel like, like, I don't have to be afraid of anything. So, yeah. So, anyways, we slept with the light on all night. Because <laughs> my husband, <laughs> because my husband was like, okay, I can't turn off the light because what if more scorpions come? And I'm here like, if you want to sleep with the light on, that's fine. I cannot sleep with the light on, but I was like, okay. I was like, okay, babe. And he's like. Well, you know, there's a hotel a little down the street and they have rooms available. Maybe we can go there. And I'm like, it's 11 p.m. I am not going to go over there. It's okay. We're fine. And we just said a prayer. And I was like, Lord, Lord. And you know what? Um, I slept, but it wasn't the best sleep of my life. But I mean, now that I was talking to some people, they were like, oh, no, scorpions always come in too female and male and I was like huh interesting I learned something new but I was not afraid I was yeah. like wow I don't know remember I read that scripture we recorded this before we both went on our trips but you remember I read that scripture that said scorpion. I just pulled it up yeah Luke 10, 19, <laughs> look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. And so the irony is that I read that scripture. That is so good. The first what? time we oh recorded this and I was worried about snakes and then you ended up encountering scorpions. I wasn't worried about snakes. I wasn't, I wasn't even worried about drowning guys. And, and I don't know how to swim. And yeah. I still do a lot of water activities. Like, I just feel like if it's my time to go, it's my time to go wherever I'm at. And I'm hoping that I encounter uh, God and he forgives me for all my sins because I'm not perfect. Right. But I, it's just some type of peace that comes over me. And I'm going to tell you something because the first time I ever got in the water, was in church camp when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, I'm 35. I still don't know how to even swim. But I went on a kayak and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go right here by the edge because I really love this. I want to do this sport and it looks so much fun. And I don't, I want to not stop myself from doing these fun things that look like fun or things I want to do just because I don't know how to swim. I'm just going to wear a life vest or whatever. And there's guys out there that can save me, right? <laughs> that was me at 18 years old. So, <laughs> you know, so I got on that, um, on the canoe it was a canoe and I went to the middle of the lake and I remember looking down and I was like, Ooh, 
I, I don't want to be down there. But I had so much peace inside of me that I was like, I don't want to be there. But if I end up there, I know where I'm going. And I'm okay with that. Like, I just have peace that I have a God who takes care of me and provides in every single way. And I don't have to be afraid of anything. And I was just thinking about that um, as I was in the water. And I was like, hmm, I can count the times I've been in a canoe or a kayaking where I'm just like, and it's literally been four times. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing. God always gives me this peace. Whether I'm with my children in a canoe or just by myself in a kayak, like I just, I, I'm filled with peace. Like I am not at all worried about my abilities, whether if I'm gonna, if I, if this boat or canoe flips, like where I'm gonna go, like I'm not even bothered by the little waves, the wind that's rocking my, my boat because mm -hmm. I know who is my father in heaven. And I know that I am a child of God and um, I'm covered by his blood. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that peace, that peace comes from your spiritual walk, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. you trusting in God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so we've talked about prayer. We've talked about meditation. You talked about reading the Bible. And yeah. I think that's a big one because I work mm -hmm. with a lot of um, people who are what we call like baby Christians, right? They're brand mm -hmm. new baby Christians. Like they just yeah. started their walk. And a lot of times like they are going through hard seasons. They're going through battles and yeah. They're so new in their faith that they don't know the Bible. Like you and I, I know I've never read the Bible like straight through, but I've read the entire Bible, right? Like I, I haven't don't... either, but this is the first time we are going, going. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've read the entire Bible. I've never read it straight through, but I have read the entire Bible. Um, and, but I've been a Christian. I was raised Catholic, but I really, really solidified my relationship with Jesus when I was in high school and I won't say how long I've been out of high school but it's been some time so <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time I've read the Bible multiple times like the you know all the books of the Bible I've gone to retreats I've been youth group leader I've been connect group leaders like I've led bible studies so I I know when storms hit what the bible says and I know what it says about me I know what it says about God I know what it says about who I am I'm yeah. a child of God like he and I think about that like as much as I care for my earthly daughter God cares so much more about me and her and I know that because I've read the Bible, right? I know what it says about God. I know he is a good father. I know he is a, he wants to give to us. I know he cares for us. Mm -hmm. But when you're a new baby Christian, you may not know that. And you may have been raised in a church that was like wrath of God. God is going to punish you. You know, God punishes sinners. God yeah. hates sinners like this this type of like negative connotation on God. Yeah. And so when you're a brand new baby Christian, you may not know what the Bible says, and it can be hard to stand on his word when you don't know what his word says. Yeah. And so I think a big, a major part of this conversation is reading the Bible as a pathway to spiritual growth, because then you're more rooted in who you are. Yeah. And not only are you just rooted in who you are because you find your identity in Christ and and because God created you and and he has a purpose for you. And also he tells you who you are in scripture. In mm -hmm. case you don't know, like if you're have if you don't know who you are and you go into anywhere any part of the bible and you start reading god 
will start talking to you, tell you that you are created in the image of God, that you are strong, you're beautiful, that you are worthy of love, that you, and, and you'll find many things that God says about you when the world's trying to tell you, like, you're not good enough, like, uh, who are you, or like, you'll never measure up, oh no, like, if you don't know God, all those things will get to you. And uh, even for people who know God, we still struggle with that because we have spiritual warfare. And the Bible says that for, for uh, what what is the scripture I said last time where um, many are the afflictions of the righteousness. Um, that's a scripture and I can't remember the, ver the verse, but basically it's saying the, the, um, we're not saved from from anything that other people in this world struggle with. That doesn't right. mean that we're over here and you're down here because you don't follow God. No, no, because if anything, you're up here and we're down here because the devil likes to keep you nice and comfy in your and gives you everything that you need. So you never feel or think that you need God. And when we're down here, he likes to crush us down. And everything starts attacking you. Everything starts happening to you because it's a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And what the uh, what you can do is like, you need to level up on your prayer because that's the only way that you're going to get through it. Just keep on holding on to God and watch how all of that just goes away and you're going to realize that wow what was that well that was spiritual warfare because there's bad spirits there's witchcraft there's bad vibes there's a lot of ugly things in this world and god always said that in this world you're you're gonna have many troubles and in so, this world you will have troubles but take heart for I have overcome the world. Yeah. But <sighs> I guess what what my point is that you we all have to believe in something. And because there's a reason and a purpose for everything. And if there wasn't like every the air you breathe wouldn't be healthy for you like so what would be the purpose of you being alive right so it's just like you we all have to believe in something and and if you don't know where to start or you need help like you can always send us a message and let us know like what your spiritual walk looks like or if you need us to pray for you because it is not an easy world we live in and also what I wanted to say is that um what did I want to say <laughs> <laughs> oh lord there's a lot of things I could say but um Hmm. We're, we're all on different spiritual paths, guys. So if you ever get confused about certain things, you can ask someone else and someone else will tell you something different. And if you really want to know what God thinks and says, then you read the Bible. Because there's people who've been church hurt. Mm -hmm. There's people who who listen to certain people who they call themselves Christian and there's all kinds of religions. There's all kinds of things out there. And the only thing that I know is that there's only one true God, the living God who is not dead. And you can, uh, you can do self-help books, which is great. I love self-help books. I learn a lot too. And I love books. And then there's just so many things out there. You can heal from so many things. 
and I've tried, I, I can tell you that I've tried, I tried, um, what is it? What kind of, of healing did I try? Oh, honestly, I, I can't tell you that I tried therapy because I've never been to therapy. Maybe when I was little, I went to someone, but that was because we went through a, a situation and that was just like, I can't remember exactly what it was. But the only thing I can tell you that has ever given me hope, a purpose and love and peace and anything is God. Like there's nothing out there that has ever given me all those things like you can look to, I don't know, many things that are out there, but in the end, you're going to feel like it's not enough. Like your spirit is not fulfilled. Like there's something missing. Like you want more. And that's, that's, those are all things that only God can, can field you in mm -hmm. spiritually because yeah. God is the spirit, the Holy ghost. Like there's the father, the son and the Holy spirit and they're together. If you don't understand that, do your research. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Well, no, no, because we no. oftentimes people turn to drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. eating, shopping, whatever, to try to yeah. fill the void that they are feeling. Uh, and it may be a void that is there because of childhood trauma. It could be there mm -hmm. because of financial struggles that you're going through it could be there because you feel unwanted or unseen like or unloved we, yeah we all have these holes in us right yeah. that are mm -hmm. there because of life uh, yeah. and when you go through a hard season like when my daughter's dad went to prison or when my fiance died like those were hard seasons and they left yeah. holes in my soul. And I could have very easily filled those holes with drugs, alcohol, shopping, whatever, you name it. Uh, but instead I turned to God and prayer, community, meditation, journaling, reading yeah. the Bible, like those were my pathways to spiritual growth in the aftermath of some of the hardest times of my life. And all too often people default to what this world says will make things better, which yeah. is let's go out and get drunk. Let's go out and smoke some weed, like whatever it is, like the world says that the world can fill those holes and it can't like there is nothing in this world that is big enough to fill the holes of your soul it is supernatural it is god it is not of this world but you can do tangible things like prayer like getting into a god-centered community like journaling and reading the bible and listening to praise and worship music to help fill those holes and it will and it is something that doesn't go away like it alcohol only soothes momentarily right like yeah but filling yourself with a spiritual something spiritual and growing spiritually in the aftermath of those hardships is going to give you lifelong fulfillment. <sighs> yep, I agree. Um, there's a scripture I, I want to share because it's um, it's where Jesus encounters the woman at the well. Mm, the good and, one. Yeah, it's oh, man. I, I love talking about these stories because they're so filled with um, wisdom and so much goodness. Like, like I can't explain to you, but here. So, so let me tell you, um, long story short, Jesus is, um, has been traveling. He, he's by the well because he's thirsty and 
Um, he's by himself. The other um, disciples have left him. I forgot where they went. They probably went and get a happy meal. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> so he's there and women would go um, to the well and get on water. So he encounters this woman and he he tells her, um, can I have a drink of water? And then she was like, like, I can't remember what she said, but basically Jesus told her her story. Like, I know you. And I think if I'm not, mis if I'm mistaken, she was, um, like, I think a prostitute. So, she was, yes. So, was it, so was the, it? I, I'm actually well-versed in this story because okay, I good. personally tell me, tell identify me. as the Yay. woman at the well. <laughs> okay. Um, and my pastor from Lubbock wrote a book about the, the unnamed women of the Bible. And she's one of the chapters, but so uh -oh. she was at the well at noon because her reputation you... was so bad that mm -hmm. she couldn't go to the well early in the morning with the other women because it's hot at noon. So you go get yeah. water early in the morning when it's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She couldn't go at that time because she had such a bad reputation that the other women didn't want her there early in the morning. Yeah. So it is noon and Jesus should have gone around this town to get to where he was going because his people, his type, his, he's, um, his religious standing of people were not allowed in this town. They weren't supposed to go in this town. They were unwanted in this town. And so typically they would walk around the town and take the long way around. Well, he decided to go into Samaria, um, and, with the purpose of meeting with this woman and it is noon and she's getting water and he's asking her for a drink. And she said, you're not even supposed to be talking to me. Like why is a Jewish a rabbi speaking to a Samar a Samarian woman? Yeah. And because he wasn't even supposed a, she's a woman B she's yep. in Samaria. Like there's, and he's two a man. Yeah, and There's, men yeah. are not allowed to talk to women and vice versa. But mm -hmm. she has had five husbands, I think it's several yeah. husbands. And back mm -hmm. then you didn't get divorced. You didn't sleep around. Like all of that was unheard of. Um, mm -hmm. And Jesus says like, go get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he was like, no, you don't. And the man that you're living with right now isn't your husband either. Mm. and she is like immediately like like how do you know this with who shame. are you yeah because he has laid all of her secrets bare like he has just told her like mm -hmm. i know who you are i see you mm -hmm. and i know all your secrets and here they are wow thank you Teresa, yeah. for just <laughs> putting it together i just think of these i just think of ideas that you just like right there i love it <laughs> i love it thank you we just you, tag team we're like you know <laughs> no because you said it better i mean i brought up the happy meal you know like <laughs> well yeah, yeah and he sends them away right like he yeah. sends them away so that he can have this intimate moment with because, her yeah mm -hmm. because that was very um it was a very born vulnerable moment yeah. mm -hmm. for her mm -hmm. And Jesus wanted to protect uh, her. If if you see it from that perspective, Jesus wanted time alone with her heart mm -hmm. because he wanted to also protect her and heal her. Because after that, he was like, you are forgiven. And she, obviously she felt some type of peace and relieved or else she wouldn't have left the way that she did because she went, she even forgot her water at the well. She left but, her jugs behind. <laughs> yeah, she was like, screw the water. Like, I got living water in me. Uh -huh. Like, Lord. Okay, let me give you the scripture, okay? Yeah, now that we have the backstory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is John 4, 14, okay? But whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty again. 
for the gift will become a spring in the man himself well upon into internal life so you will thirst no more yeah yeah water. exactly i know i'm drinking <laughs> um electrolytes and water but yeah. yeah so it is it's a beautiful story of like she was going through a hard time if you yeah. ever watched um the chosen it's the new like adaptation yeah. of the new testament they mm -hmm. they depict her story really well in that she is trying to get her husband it, the the chosen kind of adds some context to these stories to help right. it, mm -hmm. you know a it gives us a little bit to more help context. a human understand right? exactly especially people who don't who haven't read the bible mm -hmm. yeah yeah because i feel like the, us who read the bible we're like oh okay yeah we i mean we know we the story get it yeah but yeah. for people who w don't read the bible they're like wow this show is interesting that's a good mm -hmm. story yeah. yeah yeah but in the chosen like they show her as a woman who is trying to get a divorce so that she mm -hmm. can marry this new man and wow. be a legitimate wife and so you see this tor turmoil in her where she wants like, to be good she does she wants to be whole again but she can't because of circumstances because of this because of that um and then she encounters jesus and he makes her whole he doesn't change her situation he doesn't make her actual husband divorce her. He doesn't wave a magic wand and fix it, but he changes the way that she sees herself. And she now sees herself as free. Yeah. And she probably sees herself too, the way that Jesus, that the way that God sees her. Maybe she finds her her identity also and she finds a new purpose a new life she finds peace so she has forgiveness i mean the woman is rich she mm -hmm. can do whatever she wants like a, a clean slate like you're yeah. that's your old life like you have a, a whole new life ahead of you you can be something different than what you were before like you no longer have to be changed up to those things that bring you down or keep you stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And that's the freedom that you find in having a spiritual growth plan. Because if you're growing spiritually all the time, like throughout the week, not just when crap hits the fan, but all the not time. Not just on Sundays, guys. Right. Not just on Sundays. Then when stuff does happen, you're rooted in who you are you know who God says you are and you have an arsenal of weapons to use when you're in warfare, when you are facing the battles and it's not a mad dash scramble to try to figure out what to do. You already know, okay, I'm going through something. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray. I'm going to journal. I'm going to read the Bible and I'm going to throw on some worship music and just praise my way through this storm yeah <sighs> preach sister <laughs> yes yes i'm like oh my god you're on fire yes go <laughs> but yeah so anyway I don't know. You got anything else to add? Any other tools to give the listeners? I think we created Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. Yep. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Well, I guess that's it. We yes. ended on a high note, guys. <clears throat> yeah. If you I hope oh go ahead. <clears throat> I need some water. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm glad to know I... that your voice, your throat doesn't just bother you at my house. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it it's like... because we talk a lot. <clears throat> yeah, we do. Yeah. We talk a lot, y'all. Yeah, like we can talk to talk. Yeah. Well I um 
Oh my goodness. What was I going to say? <sighs> I guess what I, um, what I wanted to say is that I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope that this helped you or informed you and to help you want to seek a spiritual path that is good for you, that is healthy, that is true, not just anything out there where you are going to be, you know, like lied to or confused about. And I hope that you can learn something from us as well. Um, and, um, yeah, please, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We love hearing from you and yeah, I really, really hope you enjoy this episode. Yes, for sure. I, um, yeah, that was my hope is kind of what Rosie said, like that this episode just helps you, um, find some tools to help anchor you in the storm so that yeah. you're not just swept away mm -hmm. and because I've been swept away and yeah, spent so years awesome. yeah spent years in a desert season and I don't want that for anybody else yeah and I think that's why we feel so passionately about doing this about preaching God's word and about just what we do the way that we live our life because we've been in those um, caves, we've been in those chains, we've been and we've been the women, those women at the well. Mm -hmm. We we've, we've been, what is it? We've been Peter. We've been everybody in, in one time or point of our lives. Like we've all fallen short, and it's never too late. And you can always, like, start fresh. And we want you to know that you're not alone. And it's important for you to, to you know, talk to somebody, open up about what you're going through. And if you have a Christian friend, you are lucky. You can ask them to pray for you. And they'll, you know cover you up in the blood of Jesus and you know that a lot of people are good they genuinely love you and they want to help you and they're not out there to judge you and criticize you and make you feel like you're not good enough like you can't be saved because that's not true right yeah I love that none of us are unsavable yeah all right. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next week, be well, be kind, and may you have a great week. Bye. Bye.